This is Sarah Felder, host of Triple P Radio and founder of Pink Peacock Project. And I'm here with my producer, Wanda. Hi, Sarah. Hi, today we're going to interview Gloria Jackson, whose sons Dennis and D'Amico V.C. are wrongly convicted, both charged with triple homicide, both sentenced to a life to life without no chance of parole, and they're both incarcerated at a correction facility in Michigan. I had met Gloria at the summit in Michigan, and um, she's an amazing woman. She actually spoke at the Survivors and, in Ann Arbor, Ann Arbor, Michigan. Yes. So now we're going to go ahead and welcome Gloria. Hi, Gloria. Thanks for joining me. And my producer, yes. Wanda. Hi, Gloria. Hello. Hi, I want you to go ahead and start off by telling us what put your sons behind bars and what year did they get arrested? Dennis and D'Amico got arrested and um, I want to say, well, they got, wait a minute, let me go back, I'm sorry. Now, when the, they were arrested when the murder first took place. It was a triple homicide. Um, when it first happened, they were looking uh African-American, light-skinned guy with cornrows. That's how it all started. And my sister stayed next door to the people who were murdered. Um, Dennis and D'Amico would periodically go check on my sister like every couple weeks. And um, somebody had just told them they knew a light tall skinned guy who used to come and visit next door at, the, at my sister's apartment. So... The day after the murder, which the murder happened, April the 5th of 2003. The next day, which was the 6th of April, they went to Dennis' home to question him about did he know these people who had been murdered. He told them he didn't know them. But on doing that, they asked that they can search the house, which he was staying there with his girlfriend, so she allowed them to search the house. They found the gun on the this case. It hadn't been in any crime. Um, uh, it hadn't been used for any crime or anything. But because he he claimed to, to be in possession of that, he was given 18 months in in uh in prison. Wow. So he, upon him doing, mind you, D'Amico is still on the street. Nobody ever hears about this murder anymore, except through the paper and the news. Uh, we would see uh, clippings or something about Buddha, but Dennis and D'Amico was never ever mentioned again after Dennis went off. Dennis was getting released 18 months later, because he did 18 months. Upon Dennis getting out, prior to uh, four weeks before he was supposed to return and we were going to get him, going to pick him up, uh, they they went to the prison. Dennis was at, and they charged him with the murder. What? What? How? And what evidence did they have to charge him with the murder? They had nothing. Nothing. They just said that when the detective showed up at my door, looking because he's now looking for Danica, and it it just hit the news. People were calling me, telling me, watch the news, um, Miss BC, watch the news. So I'm on turning on the TV, and I see that they want my son. They said he's armed and dangerous. And I'm like, oh, my God. It scared me because I thought the first thing I thought, oh, my God, they're going to kill him. Exactly. And oh, my God. But now, so they just, now this was Dennis that they were, no, because Dennis wasn't out yet, or was he already out? Didn't know. Dennis never got a chance to get out. They charged him 18 months later while he was doing his time on that gun that I told you they recovered that was unrelated to and hadn't had anything to do with the crime. They gave him 18 months for being possessed, but they didn't go there for that. They only went to talk about this trip on homicide. So they actually waited all that time and then went after them again. Yes, yes. Wow. And it was like we were blindsided because we hadn't heard anything else about this murder and I, you know, nobody uh, would ever talk about Dennis and Nico. Nothing was ever talked about that they did and not anything. So did you all, did you have an attorney for your, for your young man? 
I didn't until I seen the news flash and saying my son was armed and dangerous. So I called him and I said, D'Amico, they're charging you with the murder. Your brother called here and said they just went. So we were all, I said, you need to go somewhere till I can find an attorney. And um, so he went and I found an attorney and which was $30,000. Oh my I, God. So who was your attorney? Uh, his name was, um, I'm trying to think of it. One of them, I had to get one of the boys a uh, state attorney okay. uh, uh, um, from uh, the state. And I had to get D'Amico, uh, an attorney was, uh, not, it wasn't Ginsburg, I'm trying to think of his name. I'm getting kind of, um, he, they both had attorneys. He was from Detroit. Um, okay. And so I, um, I, I called the attorney and I told D'Amico, go to his office right now. He went there and the attorney had called Washington County and told them that he would be bringing D'Amico in Monday morning. He was going to turn himself in. And we didn't want him to go in without a lawyer. Right. And so when we, he got, when they did, they chased him down before he can be brought in. What? And, and um, they told him he was said he was scared to move. He said they said uh, get out of the car. And he said no, I'm not because I'm in my seatbelt. If you want to come take it off, you can take it off. So when they took him to prison, I took him to jail. I'm sorry. They took D'Amico to that county jail and never asked him one thing about the murder. They just put him in a cell. They never even questioned him. Period. What? Wow. Oh my they god. They never ask him anything about the murder. Period. They never ask him a question. And so when, um, we, and so my son Dennis is calling me saying, Mom, don't worry about it. We didn't know the people. We don't even know what they're talking about. They just, they just are messing with us. Um, don't worry about it. There's nothing going to come out of this. So when Dennis was released, which I told you he, he had four weeks to go, they went and picked him up and brought him down here to the county jail. Both, so now both boys are in the county jail and, um, awaiting it. They went before the judge. They charged them with murder. Oh, oh my and, God. Uh, so that's how fast it went. They were charged with murder. Um, now you have us running around trying to get lawyers and uh, the state had to give them one because I had to sell everything I own to even get them anything. We sold cars and everything just to come up with the $30,000. Oh, oh my God. Well, the one lawyer, we didn't have anything. I mean, you're poor. you just basically living off of, you know, a check a month, every month. Mm -hmm. You didn't have any money. So when they charged them, we, we still were thinking nothing's going to happen here. We, Dennis and D'Amico didn't know the people who were deceased, who the victims. I didn't know the victims, and I've been living here since 73. They didn't know them. I didn't know them. So how do you fight when you don't know, even know what's going on? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Now, who actually, because there it was no evidence against them. So, there was no evidence. So, so how did they charge them? I mean, what did yeah, they So charge? who actually, like, said, pointed them out? Like, I mean, why, why did they even the take their word? That's what I, this girl who orchestrated the crime, she was 20 years old and she lived in the same apartment complex that uh, the guy who, the victims who were murdered. And she had told them that she had seen, because she, um, the, uh, the young girl that was in the house, it was a nine year old girl in there. And she said that it was a light skinned guy that had on masks, but she could see the color of his skin. Wow. And so, this girl that's, that uh, orchestrated this murder, she was the one told them that she remembers seeing my light-skinned son. She, did, she didn't know his name. She only heard them call him Dennis when he would go over to his auntie's house. Wow. And that led them to this right there. There was never, they, well, let me, they, they took Dennis' truck because they said that Dennis' truck was involved in this murder. Mind you, they took Dennis' truck the next day. Mm -hmm. um, they luminated it. They tore his truck completely up to find out when the when they, um, when the uh, the uh, when they brought everything back and they gave the findings. They said that the 
truck never had been used in any kind of homicide. There was no blood. There was no fibers from the people's house because it was raining outside. Nothing from there. So did they did they pay for his truck to be repaired? No, no. Mm -mm. They just kept that truck. We never, we never. Uh, you never got the truck back. back? The, the my, his aunt, his dad's sister. She went and got it. She okay. went, they eventually gave it to him after so long, you know. So and how so did they, your other son get him? I mean, if they were saying it was Dennis, then how did your other son, how did she point him out then? She didn't. They, uh, she just, about uh, um, when that trial came, she just said that she think he had a brother. So it ended up just that much. Miko was never identified by nobody. Oh, never been God. talked about. He was just set in prison. He was never talked about, period. Oh, nobody my God. Had ever, nobody had ever seen him or mentioned his name. They didn't, nobody. Oh. It, it went from her saying that she had seen my son, Dennis, till, till they just picked me go up. It was like nobody, no witnesses, no nothing. And when they did the DNA, when they found it, when they ran the DNA, it never matched Dennis or D'Amico. So why are they still in prison? And I mean, my thing is, how did they even, because she says she thinks he has a brother, so you want to yes. throw this innocent man in prison because you think he has a brother? Who? Well, I mean, what, what is wrong that's, with that's you, Michigan? Went, <laughs> that's how it happened. It happened just that quick. Next thing you know, um, they, there was never not one shred, not one piece of evidence ever. So they found. Go ahead. What you so said. what? So what? You paid the attorney thirty thousand dollars. What did he do? He did nothing because he came to me and he told me, uh, Miss B.C., you have a look on your face like you're afraid. And he said, but you need not worry about anything. These people do not have one piece of evidence, nothing. The description that they gave was a guy who was light-skinned, tall, had uh, braids or a ponytail. He, and he was between 140 and 150 pounds. Your son is 220 pounds. Oh, and, nice. but it didn't matter. It didn't matter. It was straight to trial it went when it went to trial the judge ended up um bounding it over the circuit court but he did say this to them he said i want you to remember this young man dennis was not called dennis the witnesses said that the guy who did this crime name was juan and we what also, yeah he was <laughs> never taken as dennis the, the, the other two witnesses that were looking out their window that lived in the complex, a young lady and her mother, yeah. they said that it was a guy named Juan. He had been coming through there. Swan, I'm sorry. He had been coming through there for, for uh, weeks and weeks. He used to visit the guy who was the victim that, that was murdered. And she said that um, uh, she told them that. And they, when they pointed Dennis out in court, she said, I never told you that. You told me his Dennis name was Juan. Lord, oh, I only wow. told you that, she said, I only told you Dennis was light skinned like Juan. I never said it was him. Oh my so God. she basically sat up there and said, I never said it was him, your son. Yeah, she said it. So it why is he know. behind bars? Come on, Michigan. It, Are it you serious? Matter. Yes, it doesn't matter. It was never no shred of evidence ever. It went from that to Narissa end up taking the stand, which was the 20 year old I told you about. Yes. And when she took the stand, she ran off the stand because she didn't want to look at them because she knew that she was taking some people down she had never met. So she she claimed that in the she claimed that the uh, when they came and got her jumped off the witness stand that she said if they didn't she said they told her if she did not say it was them they were going to give her life in prison and they what? had cut her and they had cut her a deal they told her she can get 12 it was she can get 12 to uh 12 to 20 if she uh went on and so she came back to the stand and said it was them what? wow oh wow. you know what you this I don't know. I don't know what can be done about this. How long have they been in prison? 
They've been in, in prison now. Uh, it'll be 17 years next April. And how old were they when they got arrested, both of them? Were, Dennis, how old was they Dennis? Were, uh, they was, uh, Dennis was uh, 24, and Miko was 22. You know, wow. Uh, wow. It's, this sounds like... Uh, uh, they like, never had a criminal record. Get that. My thing is, they never been to prison. They never had a criminal history. Uh, I mean... It was, it was just, it was crazy. It was like, how do you fight, though? You you know, you up against uh, the system. And, and then that lady, then they it. told, then the lady that um, said that, you know, it wasn't even the right person. It was some guy named Juan. Then they threatened her, and then she just went to lie on them. So it was like a domino effect. She went to save herself, but took two innocent people down but you know what gloria what we're going to do is take a break and when we come back we're going to continue uh with this and i want you to go ahead and tell finish telling us about um your two sons so triple p radio will be right back with my exclusive guest gloria thank you okay. 